We continue with the WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day. I'm tracking the progress of the severe thunderstorms coming up. He was just an all around good guy, really. What friends are saying about a Central Kentucky man police say died after being shot at a livestock center. How a business near the bluegrass stockyards that was badly damaged by the massive fire is now receiving some help from a competing company. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good evening. A line of strong and severe storms is expected to sweep across this state late tonight. Damaging winds and heavy rain could cause problems while many people are asleep. It is a WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day. We begin tonight with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. He shows us right now on the first alert defender. How about it? Chris? Yeah, thunderstorms beginning to really ramp up across western Kentucky, western Tennessee. Still hours away, though, from really impacting our region in the central and eastern Kentucky with true severe thunderstorm potential. We're looking at our severe weather network of cams from across the entire region. We have got you covered all evening long in monitoring the progress of these storms through E Town, Louisville, eventually into Midway, Frankfort, Lexington, and Richmond, then into parts of eastern Kentucky as we go through the next several hours. Hours, and by next several hours, we're talking really late this evening into the wee hours of the morning. That tornado watch continues in effect for parts of central and especially western Kentucky. Goes until 11 p.m. May see that extended a little farther to the east in some aspect. The initial line of thunderstorms across western Kentucky is weakening just a little bit. Though the front is off to our west, that will have the more potent of the two lines of storms developing along that. Anyone going to be fair game for a shower or thunderstorm if you're out and about this evening, especially? Especially with this weakening band of action that is heading toward the I-65 corridor as of now. Not picking up on a lot of lightning with that, but we are getting reports of winds greater than 40 to 45 miles per hour. The next line, though, beginning to take shape from the Memphis, Tennessee area toward Paducah. Then look farther to the south. Deadly or dangerous tornadoes, I should say, on the ground right now into parts of Mississippi and Alabama. So that is where the greatest instability is. That is where the greatest tornado risk is. Around here, our main risk comes from high winds and heavy rains tonight. Could be talking about winds greater than 50 miles an hour and also heavy rains that could cause some stream and street flooding on the tune of one to three inches. A lot of these storms will be blowing across the area, guys, as many of us are asleep. If you go to Walgreens, you go to Kroger, WKYT and Midland Radio weather radios are teaming up to give you a discount price for these weather radios that will alert you especially in your sleep at night when you're not paying attention to the weather when warnings are issued for your area. When I come back in a few minutes, we're going to fire up a new future radar to track the storms in from the west. Chris, thank you. And a reminder, you can track storms along with the latest traffic with the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. You can download it for free in the app or Google Play stores. So far, it is a mystery. What led to a deadly shooting at a Central Kentucky Livestock Center? Tonight, we are learning more about the victim. Investigators say that someone shot 53-year-old Shane Thomason yesterday afternoon at the Washington County Livestock Center. He was from Garrett County. Today, our Phil Pendleton talked to some people who knew him. It's our top story at 6. Traveling to Washington County to sell cattle was a normal part of Shane Thomason's routine. So was eating at Smith's restaurant in downtown Lancaster. Every day, twice a day. 53 year old man that people say was a lifelong farmer was shot and killed behind the Washington County Livestock Center Monday afternoon. It's kind of like a bad dream, you know. Misty Wood says he sat at the same place and usually ordered the same thing at the downtown Lancaster restaurant. Yeah, he hauled and sold cattle and. Uh, he also had a dump truck where he hauled uh, and sold rock. Kentucky State Police are still investigating the circumstances surrounding what happened. All we know is that there was a shooting. Thomason was severely injured. He was airlifted to the University of Louisville Hospital where he died. Not hear nothing. I guess with the cattle ball, I didn't hear nothing. Workers who didn't want their faces on camera say they didn't know anything was wrong until police and emergency workers showed up in droves. Now they cannot believe such a violent act happened there. Like I said, I've been here 19 years and I've never seen it come to this kind of a deal. And I don't think nobody has. Relatives say Thomason was loved by many in Lancaster and they don't understand why this happened. They say that he was one of a kind and special to all of them. It's just a big shock to everybody. In Garrett County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. 
State police have not said much about the investigation other than they believe the shooting was foul play. They have not said anything about any suspects in the case. A man was badly injured when police say he was involved in an unusual crash in Lexington. It happened this afternoon near the intersection of New Circle Road and Eastland Parkway. Police say a man jogging in that area saw a driver having a medical emergency. The man tried to help, but police say he ended up being dragged by the car, which then crashed into a truck. Witnesses say the man was pinned between the car and the truck. I'm just, it's, I hate it for him, you know, trying to help somebody and they end up in that position. That's, that's bad. I hate it. It's, it's terrible, you know, him trying to help somebody and it, him end up the one in bad shape. Police say the man was taken to the hospital with critical injuries. The driver was also taken to the hospital, but police do not know her condition tonight. New tonight, a Tennessee fugitive arrested in southern Kentucky last week has pled guilty to some of the charges against him. Rick Brock now admits to resisting arrest, assault, and escape in Laurel County. He's now waiting to be taken back to Tennessee. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office says deputies found Brock hiding in his brother's home after being taken to the sheriff's office. The investigators say he assaulted a deputy and tried to escape. Brock faces child rape and aggravated assault charges out of Tennessee. We have an update tonight on the investigation into that massive fire that destroyed bluegrass stockyards in Lexington. This afternoon, Lexington firefighters say they and the ATF are still going through the rubble of the stockyards, but they're not saying if they're any closer to finding a cause. They do say there's no indication of anything suspicious. Investigators also say someone will be at the site tonight to keep an eye on the rubble when storms move through. Some nearby businesses were also damaged or destroyed, including Slim's Towing. Sean Moody tells us that business is now receiving help from a competitor. It's hard to know where to start when your entire business has gone up in flames. We just figured that it was, it was kind of like the end, you know what I mean? Dwayne Slim Hogan lost his entire towing business in the stockyard fire. Right now it's just baby steps. He's starting with numbers. Right now we're trying to uh, identify what is what, identify to get the exact inventory number. But he'll be back in business a little sooner than he expected, with help from a place you might not expect. He would help me out if it, ha if it happened to me. Lee Roberts runs Bluegrass Towing and Roberts Heavy Duty Towing and Recovery. We saw the smoke. Um, I contacted Slim to see if he was okay. We, we're competitors. Um, you know, we, we both do different things in the city, but we, you know, we, he comes to my place, I go to his place. When something like this happens, we got to help each other out. So Lee will let Slim use one of his trucks and give him some space in the bluegrass towing shop. Everybody's calling in offering this and offering that, but to offer as much as he offered as far as a truck and a place to operate, you know, that hit me and, and you know, I didn't know how to actually take it, so I didn't initially respond because I, I, I didn't swallow. I had to swallow it. It shows the brotherhood in the industry is a lot stronger than rivalries. Some people get a bad image of the towing business. They're thinking everybody's bad, and they think all the towing businesses are salvages and nobody has hearts, but this right here is an example. People have hearts, and people have feelings, and people do care. In Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. Well, that is a great example of kindness there. Hogan said he hopes to start fresh once he gets back on his feet again after this fire. Do University of Kentucky students feel safe on campus? A newly released survey is providing some new insight tonight. Kristen Kennedy talked to UK leaders and students about the results of that survey. It's a story that's new at 6 tonight. Recent results of a University of Kentucky student safety survey show more than 90% of students feel safe on campus. I feel very safe on UK's campus. I've never had an issue. It's all well lit when walking back, even from the K lot, which is kind of far away. I'm pretty safe on campus because there's a cat's path where there's pause and that's where you're going to be seen 24-7 with a camera. We want them to know where do you go, who do you tell, and if you want to talk about it first in a private confidential setting, these are the services to go to. 
Dr. Diane Folingstad created the survey. It's the first of five students will take to help her team help victims. The students could give comments at the end of the survey, and a lot made comments about what they wanted the police to do. Some of the suggestions students made that UK police are putting into practice are more officers, patrolling, more surveillance cameras, and more emergency call boxes. With nearly 2,000 cameras now deployed on campus, we're seeing our crime numbers really starting to drop. UK Police Chief Joe Monroe says his department learned that through the survey, a majority of students didn't feel like safety was their responsibility. These um, young kids and teenagers feel like it's somebody else's responsibility for their own personal safety. So that's something we got to work on and figure out how we can close that gap and, and make it a shared responsibility. The results of the first year are the start of a campus wide conversation. In Lexington, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. 24,000 people took part in that first survey. UK leaders are getting ready to send out the second of five surveys. After a tough overtime loss over the weekend at Kansas, the UK basketball team returns to SEC play tonight. The Cats are on the road at Tennessee. Rob Bromley joins us now live from Knoxville with a preview of tonight's game. Hello, Rob. Well, here at Thompson Bowling Arena, Amber, the Wildcats are warming up just behind me. And uh, here in Knoxville, it has been kind of tough on Kentucky down through the years. Just how tough uh, this game will be tonight remains to be seen. Tennessee with a losing record. But you have to remember, they've beaten Florida. They've beaten South Carolina. Kentucky did not quite get the job done out at Kansas over the weekend. But... Everybody knows how this team has improved. Tonight, they have to handle another situation on the road, and it will be a challenge. Don't overlook anybody. Don't take anybody for granted. Just know when you step on that court, that team is going to play well. Maybe they're going to play better than they played against anybody else. Most teams do against Kentucky. So just go out there and fight for 40 minutes. You actually got to come out and play a game every day. Uh, there's no slack. And last year, uh, if, uh, if a guy wasn't playing as well, there's another guy that could come in for like a platoon. And this year, every guy got to be able to find a place and play their role and be able to win games. 7 o'clock tip off tonight on ESPN. Coming up shortly in sports, Kenny Payne talks about Tennessee and Rick Barnes in his first year here at UT talks about playing the Wildcats. For now, that's it from here in Thompson Bowling Arena. Sam Amber, back to you. Rob, thank you. After tonight's game, the Cats return to Rupp Arena Saturday to face Florida. Kentucky lawmakers gave it final approval last night, and today Governor Matt Bevin made his decision on a bill that would tweak Kentucky's informed consent law for abortions. That's in seven minutes. And then Fayette County school leaders have announced when students will make up days missed for snow. After a record-setting Groundhog Day for temperatures, now we track the possibility of strong to severe thunderstorms. The new hour-by-hour -hour forecast is next. When big news breaks, be the first to know. Download the WKYT News app and turn on push alerts. Breaking news at your fingertips when you need to know what's going on. Push alerts, now available on the WKYT News app. Every year I operate thousands of hours. I'm turned on and off thousands of times. I keep you cool and I keep you warm. I have the best 10-year no-hassle replacement warranty around. No worries, no questions, no hassle. I am ComfortMaker. Go to ComfortMaker.com today. You're probably wondering, with all the meat that Arby's has, do they have ocean meat? Well, wonder no longer. Arby's has more wild-caught Alaskan pollock fillets than you could ever imagine. Especially if you're only imagining one fillet. Eat two crispy fish fillet sandwiches or flatbreads for $5. Arby's, we have the meat. Get on your computer or mobile device. Because of all the great Toyota deals out there, most are not seen on TV. That's why you need to visit buyatoyota.com for a huge selection of savings offers that couldn't possibly fit in a TV commercial, including 0% financing, great lease deals, and two-year no-cost maintenance. So get on your computer or mobile device and go to buyatoyota.com, Toyota's official website for deals. Toyota, let's go places. Like to know how to avoid measuring, marking, and bad cuts with your circular saw? With the Craig Rip Cut Saw Guide, you'll make those accurate cuts repeatedly without measuring or marking your boards. 
The rip cut adjusts quickly to your cutting width, making cuts in plywood and MDF fast, easy, and accurate every time. Great projects all start with perfect cuts, so get the Craig Rip Cut Saw Guide today. Satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Get your Craig Rip Cut at craigcutting.com or these and other fine retailers. Hey guys. This February, give her the gift she's really going to love. Endless prime rib, baby. Premium weekends at Golden Corral are here. Live it up with prime rib, shrimp, salmon, and more. Just $13.99. Only at Golden Corral. At Baptist Health, we want you to know the facts. Visit BaptistHealthTalks.com to view a video of cardiologist Michael Rukavina on a new leadless pacemaker technology. Baptist Health Lexington. Be a healthier you. <gasps> you need a better car. It's my credit. Don't worry, because when, when you, you need, need to make a move, move Drive Time approves. Were you guys always this cool? Mm. Hey. Oh, hi. Yeah, totally. Save yourself. Get approved at Drive Time first. Call, click, or visit. When I needed a new furnace, I did my research, found out that Comfort Heating and Air had the highest reviews on Google and Angie's List. So I went with Comfort Maker's 10-year no-hassle warranty. Do what I did, call the Comfort Man today. It is a WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day. We've been talking about this day for the past week as possibly featuring one that could have severe thunderstorms across the Bluegrass State. Unfortunately, we've seen severe weather already across the West. Now we're going to track those storms into parts of Central Kentucky. Severe weather cams fired up, ready to go tonight to track the weather in from West to East. So we're focusing those cams for areas especially to the west of Interstate 75. Louisville, E-Town will be among the first cameras to light up with some strong thunderstorms late this evening, then eventually Midway, Frankfurt, Lexington, and Richmond. And again, we've got cams across the entire area to not only focus on in terms of the severe weather, but to match up what's going there with what we're seeing on the Defender Radar Network. Tornado watch out for Western Kentucky until 11 o'clock this evening gets into parts of central Kentucky. Initial line of thunderstorms now beginning to take on more of a heavy rain signature. We had severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings with that first line a little earlier across western Kentucky. It's one of those evenings to where at any point a gusty shower or thunderstorm can pop well ahead of the cold front and work across your area. Starting to see some rains here from Casey County toward the Lake Cumberland area. Good folks into Adair County getting in on some of the rains as well. Lexington Metro outside of a sprinkle or two, not a whole lot going on. Heavy rains lining up to the west of the I-65 corridor that extends a little farther to the south toward the Kentucky-Tennessee border counties. But again, this initial line of thunderstorms not as strong and not even close to what we were seeing two hours ago. The next line of thunderstorms right ahead of our cold front, that's what's going to take over in all likelihood as we go through the next several hours. Parts of the deep south dealing with a lot of tornadoes right now into parts of Mississippi and Alabama. A lot of times in a setup like this, when you get big storms to pop to our south, that can sometimes rob a little bit of that energy and moisture transport toward Kentucky. Bad for those folks down there may be good for us around here. Heavy rain threat, here's the new hour by hour future radar. Then here's that line of thunderstorms that is now across the Paducah area. It races into central and eastern Kentucky roughly late evening into the wee hours of tomorrow morning. By 6 in the morning, it is right along the Virginia and Kentucky border county. Let's show you that again. And again, keep a uh, close eye on that timeline. Heavy rain's a good likelihood, so we could talk about some stream or street flooding before the night is over. Here's midnight. Here's 1 a.m. with that line right on top of central Kentucky. The problem with that line is likely to be the threat for some damaging winds as it zips its way across central and eastern Kentucky. Between now and midnight, greatest threat for severe weather is off to our west. Winds will still crank to 45 miles per hour at times. Light sleepers, this is not the night for you. Severe weather potential will increase as we get closer to midnight and into the wee hours of the morning with also the uh, possibility of some heavy rains. That new hour by hour wind gust forecast, too, is crazy. With those gusts that are greater than 50 to 55 miles an hour, look at this across southern Kentucky. Four o'clock tomorrow morning, forecasting Monticello to hit 58 miles per hour for a wind gust that may or may not even be from a thunderstorm. 
you get a thunderstorm in there, those gusts can be a little higher. So keep a very close eye out, batten down the hatches tonight. May want to secure any loose outdoor objects now before those winds really crank up. Tomorrow afternoon looks very nice, actually. It's windy, but it is not bad at all. Some sunshine around. Snowflake or two on Thursday. Watching next week, I think we go into the frozen tundra with the possibility of snow days lurking for most of next week. Short term, we'll be here all night, though, to track the severe weather threat. We're dependent on you. We'll be here as long as it takes. Okay. Thanks, boss. You bet. New tonight, a bill that changes Kentucky's informed consent requirement for abortions is now law. Governor Matt Bevan signed the bill this afternoon after meeting with lawmakers who sponsored it. The state Senate approved the bill yesterday afternoon. The new law requires a woman to have a face to face meeting or real time video consultation with a doctor at least 24 hours before having an abortion. New tonight, Fayette County schools have now, now have a plan to make up the district's last three snow days. Fayette County students will now be in school on March 18th, April 8th, and May 25th, which as of now is the last day of school. School leaders say at this point the last day of school has only been pushed back by one day. Rob Bromley joins us again live from Knoxville. And Rob, it's a rivalry game, and these games can be tough on the favorite. <sighs> Well, the Wildcats and the Tennessee Volunteers, John Calipari has this team going in the right direction, and the Cats hope to keep it going in that direction. We'll talk about it when we come back with sports. WKYT First Alert Weather is brought to you by Lexington Athletic Club. Get on your computer or mobile device. Because of all the great Toyota deals out there, most are not seen on TV. That's why you need to visit buyatoyota.com for a huge selection of savings offers that couldn't possibly fit in a TV commercial, including 0% financing, great lease deals, and two-year no-cost maintenance. So get on your computer or mobile device and go to buyatoyota.com, Toyota's official website for deals. Toyota, let's go places. When it comes to your heart, there's one team that's leading the way to better care in the area, Baptist Health. Our team exceeds national standards for heart attack care and has been recognized with top quality ratings for cardiac surgery. From clinical research trials to advanced imaging and surgical options, our heart specialists provide nationally recognized comprehensive care right here at Baptist Health. 19 pool tables and a full bar. Only at Silver Q on New Circle Road. Shelter insurance has covered a lot of miles and a lot of cars and drivers since 1946. We like knowing we have you covered, so you can just sit back and enjoy the ride. Shelter insurance. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Man, these wings look good. Yeah, this spicy honey barbecue sauce is so good, it'll change your life. Hmm. Mm. Sir, it looks like we're leading in the polls. You're running for president? Don't answer that. Life-changing? Maybe. Indescribably good? Definitely. The Boneless Wings Meal with Spicy Honey Barbecue Sauce. Served with crinkle fries and a small drink. Zaxby's. Indescribably good. Mamma Mia! Broadway's smash hit musical featuring 22 of ABBA's greatest hits. Mamma Mia! You already know you're gonna love it. February 4th through 7th at the Lexington Opera House. A fast food joint for slow smoked pork is like going to a carpenter for a root canal. Sure, they got a drill, but do you really want that in your mouth? Come get some real slow smoked pork at Sonny's Barbecue. Both pulled and sliced pork with sides and bread for $9.99 or with a redneck egg roll for $11.99. Sonny's Barbecue, local pit masters since 68. Ha, ha, ha.
And welcome back, everybody, to the floor of Thompson Bowling Arena, where the Tennessee Volunteers have just come out to warm up. Tip off between Kentucky and Tennessee coming up at 7 o'clock. And the Wildcats have put together four straight very impressive games. Now, Tennessee, on the other hand, has really struggled under first year head coach Rick Barnes. But the Cats will need to be on their guard. The Vols start three seniors and a junior. Kevin Punter is averaging 23 points a game. I think Tennessee is a very scrappy team. Um, they're not, you're right, they're not very big, but they fight. Uh, they send four and five guys to the offensive glass at times. Our bigs, this is a game where they need to step up and play well. When you think of Kentucky, I mean, they've got to be on every night. And some kids, it take them a little bit longer to probably figure that out, as opposed to some of, I don't care how many stars you put by a recruit's name, they come in. It's never as easy as they thought it would be. Rick Barnes in his first year after coming from Texas to Tennessee. It is a 7 o'clock tip-off on ESPN. So we are just a little more than 30 minutes away. John Calipari saying he would cut down on the minutes of his guards with uh, Tyler Ulis playing the entire game out of Kansas. Isaiah Briscoe and Jamal Murray practically playing the entire game. We'll see how it goes here tonight. Brian Milam is back home, and he has the rest of the sports. Brian. Thank you, Rob. Let's talk a little football. Mark Stoops and UK have made the hire of Lamar Thomas official. Word coming today, UK has hired also Tommy Mangino as UK's new offensive quality control coach. Mangino is the son of former Kansas head coach Mark Mangino. Tommy Mangino was previously the wide receivers coach at Iowa State. Early estimates from scouting services has Kentucky's class expected to sign tomorrow in the nation's top 20. How about that? Mark Stoops and his recruiting coordinator Vince Merrow have landed more gifted players from Ohio and the South, but they snagged some real talent from right here in the Bluegrass State. The football there is, is very strong. And we are very well represented in that state. I mean, right. you know, I heard a teacher, AD, tell me we went through there the other day with Coach Stoops. He said, uh, you know, Kentucky, you wouldn't think it would be as prominent in the state. But he said, when you come through now, the locals you see now is Kentucky, Notre Dame, Michigan, Ohio, you know, Ohio State. And so it's always going to be important because our ties there. Mm -hmm. An impressive list of schools to be associated with. You can hear more from Vince Merrow and Mark Stoops during our complete look at the National Signing Day, Wildcats of the Future 2016. It airs tomorrow night at 10 o'clock on the CW Lexington. Sam and Amber, back to you. The final check of your first alert forecast is next. And then on the CBS Evening News with Super Bowl 50 now just five days away, look at some of the best and worst ads and why many people love them so much.